Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Collard Valley Cooks. Today I'm putting together a chicken casserole. It's called scalloped chicken. And it's gonna be really good. I'm gonna show you what's gonna go in it. We're gonna get over here and make some homemade gravy for it. And then we're gonna put it together, all right? Hope you're having a blessed day. It's really close to Easter. Um, if you're watching this, uh, when I post it, it's uh, Easter weekend, and um, my kids are actually going to be here some today, not for Easter, but just visiting, so I'm making some dinner. I've got collards going, I've got pintos going, and I'm going to throw this in the oven, and then I'm going to be done, all right? You're going to use chopped chicken, you're going to use chopped onion, and I chopped it small, it's diced, celery the same way, dice it. I do not saute my onion and celery in dishes like this because I like a stronger flavor. When you saute something, it actually lightens the, the flavor of it. Um, and so I would rather have it raw going in, all right? If you want to saute yours, you uh, can. We're gonna use some boiled eggs. Um, and, and then I got some chopped up bread, probably about six or seven slices. And it's wheat bread because that's what we buy. You can use whatever you have. Okay, in the gravy, you're going to use some um, white lily flour. I'm using self-rise in a half cup. I am using a half stick of butter. And I'm actually going to add a little extra butter. And I'm going to use the fat on the top of my homemade chicken stock. So really, there's going to be about a half cup of fat to a half cup of flour, okay? And then we're going to use the broth and two cups of milk that I have over there in the counter. All right, you're going to have everything prepped and ready. Then you're going to make your gravy, and then you're going to layer it in the dish. All right? We're going to add the fat off the top of this stock. It's probably only about an eighth cup. So you're going to start out with about a half cup of fat. I use some of the fat off of my broth, and the rest of it's just pure salted butter. All right, and at this point, this is melting, and we're going to add our flour to it, some salt and pepper. So we're going to put the flour in here. Go ahead and use the whole half cup. It should be equivalent fat and flour, half cup to half cup. We're using a half cup because I'm going to make a lot of gravy. I like to use the sifter because it just makes prettier gravy to me when you sift it. Now you're gonna brown this. And as it's browning, we're gonna add the salt and pepper. And I'm using my larger skillet since I'm making more gravy. Lots of times I use my iron skillet, but I'm making a good bit, so I decided to use this one. It's already starting to brown a little. So we're gonna add our salt and pepper Salt and pepper. It looks really good. Let me get a longer utensil. All right, it's starting to brown good on that side. I'm going to turn this around. And it was because it's over there next to where the uh, collards are cooking so that it gets a little warmer. I'm going to start with four cups of liquid and then probably add the rest of this. So this chicken broth mixed with milk going in. Four cups. It's going to be about five cups of liquid. I'm going to use this whole quart of stock that I had put up. We're going to cook this until it thickens. And it's going to be good. Tell you what would be good in it is some poultry seasoning. Let's put some in there. All right, this is McCormick poultry seasoning. And I'm going to add a good three quarters of a teaspoon. It'll make it taste good since it's a chicken casserole. So it's got chicken broth, milk, 
poultry seasoning, salt, pepper, flour, and butter. You know it's going to be good. So once this starts heating up, it's going to start to thicken. And we're going to turn it off when it does that. While that's heating up, I'm using the time to clean up a little bit. Multitask. Clean this off where I got it dirty. Put it back in my spice rack. Oh, I don't need to put this away yet because I need it to hold my spatula. Now it takes a minute because that was a lot of liquid. And remember, it was cold coming out of the refrigerator. Both the broth and the milk was cold. So it's going to take it a minute to get hot and start thickening. But once it starts doing that, it won't take it long at all. Now this is a nonstick skillet. It is a USA nonstick skillet. And you can use this in it. I'm barely going, you know, touching the bottom. I don't intentionally scratch them. Uh, because Even if they say you can, I just, I try to treat them well. But since this is a gravy whisk, I'm just using it to mix it. And it keeps the uh, gravy from being lumpy. And it gets along the bottom of the pan because it's a gravy whisk. If you don't have one, they're really nice. A, a viewer sent me one and... Now that I've been using them, uh, once you start using them, you really like them. You'll find yourself grabbing it when you make gravy. For sure, it's a utensil that gets used in the kitchen. Now, this recipe will not be in a cookbook. This is a new recipe that I'm trying. I had some chicken that I really needed to use. And I wanted to put something together that tastes good. Anytime you make a homemade gravy, uh, it tastes a lot better. Now this is not a real thick gravy, and that's fine because we've got a lot of dry breadcrumbs going in it, and you're gonna need something to soak that up, make it good. So you don't want it to be real thick, just use the same recipe that I did with the half cup of fat to the half cup of flour, all right? And there's six cups of liquid, two cups of milk, and four cups of broth. All right, I'm gonna put my gravy right here on this trivet. It's hot, so be careful with it. Go ahead and have a preheated oven. And we're gonna start layering this together. Okay, we'll start with just a little bit of this gravy in the bottom. I went ahead and I sprayed my casserole dish. So now that we have some gravy in the bottom, we're going to add everything a little at a time. And I'm going to chop up my egg as I go. I didn't want to have it chopped all over the cutting board. So we'll put a couple of boiled eggs. And I'm just going to chop them with my little egg slicer. And I do both ways so that they're little cubes. I really think this is Easter worthy. If you want to make something different, it's kind of like a easy chicken and dressing in a way, I guess you could say. Now look, I'm going to get my hands dirty. I'll just deal with it. <laughs> We're going to sprinkle celery and onion. chicken. We'll put the breadcrumbs on next and that way they'll get gravy on top of them. And you're going to need a good bit of chicken. This is a rotisserie chicken and I'm going to use the whole chicken. So if you boil a chicken, just pick the meat off and chop it and plan on using all the meat, okay? Because this is a big casserole we're making. Big one. Alright, you're going to put half of your bread on it. And then gravy. And you could have just thrown everything 
in a bowl, mix it all together, and just threw it in here if you want to do it that way. There's the egg. The rest of everything goes on here now. I'm just going to pick it up, throw it in, try to move it around. Get some of those onions over on the other side. We love celery. I don't know if you do, but we sure love it. And I think there's enough chicken in it already because this was a really big rotisserie from Sam's Club, but I'll throw a little bit of extra on it. Now, if you don't want to touch everything, get you a big bowl, mix it all up, and then put it in your baking dish, okay? If it bothers you to touch stuff, but it doesn't bother me to touch anything because Lord, people fuss about it. And Gordon Ramsay, he touches everything before it goes out of the kitchen to make sure it's cooked right. And he touches it with his hand, fingers. Cooks touch stuff, y'all. Boy, don't that look good. This is going to be delicious. And I'm going to bake this for about 45 minutes at least. You can spread some of your gravy to the other side if you need to. You can tell this has got plenty of gravy. It's going to be good and moist. Hey, y'all. This is the first time I ever made this recipe, and after tasting it, I did change a few things. I am thickening up the gravy, so you'll see that in the recipe that's printable from the website. I want to tell you a couple things about the chicken, uh, the scallop chicken. I personally think it would be better topped with different things like Ritz crackers or buttered oyster crackers or something like that. So I'm gonna give you some options to do that. And I'm also gonna give you options for those of you that don't wanna boil your own chicken and you wanna use the canned broth, you don't wanna cut up the bread, and you wanna use some stovetop stuffing. I've got quite a few options on the recipe I typed up. So I hope you enjoy this recipe. And I'm gonna use an eight ounce bag of mild cheddar on the top. And this is optional. You don't have to put this on there. If you want to put Ritz crackers or whatever you want to put on the top, it's fine. But this is what we're using today. I've got my oven on 350. I'm going to turn on the convection and the light. That's going to be really delicious. So I will see you when it comes out of the oven. We're going to have a feast tonight. All right, our casserole is done. We're going to get it out of the oven. It looks really good. I'll show it to you. And um, we'll dig it. It's bubbly. All right, we're going to dip some of this out and give it a try. It looks very good. Okay, it is still pretty thin, so when I do the recipe, I'm going to actually have y'all put just a little extra flour in there uh, to thicken it just a little bit more. Let me taste it, though. I'm sure it's delicious. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Very delicious. I think everybody's going to love it. Mm, it really is good. Delicious. We'll see you next time on Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. Y'all hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you later. Love ya.